Hey guys, DIY Salvage Guy here, and I want to do a quick review and unboxing of QuickJack's BL5000 SLX model. Now, they sell this model for about $1,500 on their website, but I was able to get an open box version for about $500 off. So I want to give you guys a quick review and unboxing of what that actually means and what the quality is to see if that $500 is a very good discount or something that I'm going to wind up regretting. So as you can see, they ship it in three separate boxes. You have box one of one, box two, and also box three. Now, box one appears to be pretty well intact over here. Everything seems to be all right, except for this one little spot over here, which you know, could be a little damaged. Maybe that's just where they opened it. That's fine. Then you get over to box number two. Then you start getting to see a little more of where this actually could be a problem. You definitely see a little water damage on the box, but that could just be on the box, and that could not be a big deal right there. So you get over here, and you start to see exactly what they're talking about as to why this could possibly be $500 off. But boxes are meant to protect the item, so just because the box is bad doesn't necessarily mean that the item is bad. And then you get over to number three, and you can see that this is perfectly fine. There's nothing going on with this, and this box seems to be perfect. Now let's do a quick unboxing and time lapse. So this is box number one. Let's check out the contents to see what the quality is, see if there's anything damaged as it comes out. So it appears that the item is packed pretty well. They use some of this sealed air product, you can tell. It's uh, designed to form fit, which is very good. Let's get both of these out of here. And let's take this out. And you can see that this is definitely appears to be a used item and has some scratches on it minor cosmetic issues something here looks like it was definitely used and let's get this thing out of the box now we come over to box number two this is the one that had a little bit more damage to the box you can tell that this one is definitely packaged a little bit differently they're using a styrofoam here instead of the standard item that was the on the box number one it's a little cracked no big deal but the item seems to be relatively intact over here. Let's get this styrofoam out of the way. And you can tell that there's really no damage on these. Definitely a little bit used, but I'm okay with that. I could deal with a little bit of scuffing. $500 off? I'm fine with that. Now, this other box appears to be perfectly fine, perfectly intact. So... We'll get to that box a little bit later. I'm going to do a quick rundown of the item itself just so you guys can see the quality of the open box version. The only things that we would note would be something like that, a little scuff mark, and maybe right here. But all in all, this, look, this item looks to be perfect. Same thing on number two couple minor scuff marks you can tell that this item was a little bit used but nothing to write home about nothing that would discourage me from recommending this thus far as a $500 discount item and the same thing for this pump this pump looks to be perfect looks to be in mint condition as you can tell 
And these blocks, these blocks all look to be perfectly fine. You can tell that this one was used a little bit, but so far so good. Now, step one in the assembly instructions is to in install these little male elbows. These elbows are gonna go right in here. So we gotta unscrew this and we have to unscrew this and we're gonna screw these in. And I say it's very important to not put Teflon tape on these. So we are going to not do that. Second thing we're going to do now is we're going to take these short little hoses that we had before and we are going to now input them into the fittings that we have. Now, this side, female fitting is going to go on the male. And remember we said earlier that we are not going to be putting any Teflon tape on that. But what we are going to do is we are going to put Teflon tape on our other side. You want to make sure that you have a nice clean piece and you always want to wrap in the direction of the way that you're going to be threading on. You wanna make sure you have it nice and tight and you can see the threads there. Now, next thing we need to do is take these hoses that came with it and we're going to connect all four of these female quick connectors. So we're going to wrap our Teflon tape on each side of these and we're going to connect all four of these right now. As you can see, we have the quick connect fitting on right now, and we're on to the next step. Next thing we have to do is fill this little air tank up to about between 40 and 50 PSI. So right now, just because it's a, an open box one, I'm going to make sure that there is actually no air pressure in there, because if it is, then we're done already. So as you can see, there's zero the PSI in here. So we're going to go ahead and start filling it up. I don't have an air compressor built into my garage or anything like that, but what I do have is this little handy number from Harbor Freight Tools, and it has, you know, you can jumpstart your car and all this other stuff, and it has a nice little air compressor in the back, so that's what we're going to wind up using. We do the same thing on this side. We're going to test our pressure, make sure that we are good. As you can tell, that this side is already pressurized, so we are going to have to Let's see if that will focus. It won't. It maxed out the gauge, so we're going to have to get this depressurized a little bit. Now the last step we have to do before we start filling the reservoir is we have to connect our last two fittings that we received in our kit into A and B. So we have to just remove these two little knobs and then we're going to put them in. You have to note again, we're not using Teflon tape on these because they have an O-ring. The quick jacks don't actually come with any of the fluid that you need in order to fill it up. And one thing that I did notice is that the hydraulic fluid was still in there because I did buy a used unit. Um, 
So I do need to go match or try to match what I had in there. I noticed that it was a little bit of red and the instructions give you a general list of compatible fluids. So I'm gonna go by that and I will be back. Went over to Advanced Auto and I picked up some AW32. It was cheaper than the automatic transmission fluid and it's one of the recommended items to go into the hydraulic pump. So I got my funnel all set up and I'm going to fill it up with about two liters or 2.1 quarts. Thing is filled up with hydraulic fluid so the next thing we have to do is test the system out and also bleed it. Now connected everything we shouldn't have any problems or anything like that. Now they're supposed to be parallel but we are are just checking this out right now just to make sure that everything works. So without further ado let's test it out. Seems to be working. All right, so the next step we have to do is obviously bleeding it. So you guys are gonna see me lift it up on one side to get the bleeder screw a little bit elevated. That way all the air comes to the top because naturally it wants to come to the top. And we should be able to bleed it. So we're gonna go up and down a couple times, two or three times to about the first locking position. And then I'm going to unlock this bleeder screw and drain a little bit of the air. So you guys are gonna see me do that in a time lapse. As you guys can see, hopefully you can see with the lighting right now, but the car is completely lifted up off the ground. And it is locked into place right here. They tell you to give it a little nice little shake. And everything seems to be good. You can see how much space there is. I should be able to get under there nice and easily. Do my As you can see the quick jacks seem to work pretty well. I was able to get everything up on the lift. The car went up nice and easy. There was no problems at all. It locked in place perfectly. And I was able to do one of the easiest oil changes I've ever done. As you guys can see my garage is not a very big place. So having these things in my garage is going to be a ginormous time saver. When I want to just putting them up against the wall and just want to check one more thing just to make sure there was a lot of pressure when the vehicle went down and there are no leaks anywhere. I don't mind that little oil. That was for my oil change and everything seems to be good. Final verdict of the quick jacks that I got for about $500 off due to them being in an open box. 
I couldn't be happier. I saved uh, $500 off the retail price and they are cosmetically perfect, more or less, with a couple minor issues here or there, but I couldn't be happier. Um, if you guys have the opportunity to buy an open box one from QuickJack, don't hesitate. Let this be a lesson for you guys. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe.